Hello everyone and welcome to another video and this one is uh, an add-on to the clock stretching video that I made and I want to show some more data here. So um, I did make the original video on a 780 Ti which was a very very good example for how clock stretching can affect your performance but I think um, the 780 Ti being a rather old graphics card makes the data not as relevant because well, no one really is running a 780 Ti anymore. It's a very old card. You can't really use it anymore. Um, but I do have a 2080 Ti in my daily system, and I now have the 1070 again, which I said I didn't use because it was giving me some contradictory information, which uh, we're going to get into. But I did the same kind of test that I did with the 780 Ti on my 2080 Ti and the 1070 as well. Um, and I put all that data into a little graph as well. And you can already see by looking at the graph that there's a pretty big difference. So whereas the uh, 780 Ti, like as we discussed, decreased by basically 50% in time that it needs to calculate the one billionth digit of GPU Pi, which is how I measured the performance, because it's a very quick test and also one that... Um, yeah, it's a, it's a light and a very quick test, which means that on cards that have rather aggressive GPU boost algorithms, which is these two, um, the core clock isn't going to move around as much. Um, if I did it with like Firestrike GPU score, the GPU boost algorithm would have changed the core clocks around quite a lot, while it wouldn't have done it on the 780 Ti. So by doing GPU Pi, I both get to test a little bit easier um, and also the results are a bit more consistent between the cards. Um, but yeah, so what I, what I wanted to show is that on more modern NVIDIA cards, specifically after the 10 series, which is where NVIDIA really ramped up the aggressiveness of their GPU boost algorithm, clock stretching becomes a lot less of an issue, at least as long as you use the curve to, add, to change your voltage. So the only way to affect your card in such a way that it runs a specific voltage, like actually you, you the only way to tell your card run this specific voltage after the 10 series is to edit your curve in uh, MSI Afterburner or any other programs that can also do that. But basically MSI Afterburner is the default for me and a lot of other people. Um, and as long as you do that, you can see by the graphs here, it is actually very inconsequential, at least over the voltage range that you get on these cards. Because if you can see for uh, the 2080 Ti and the 1070, it starts at 975 millivolts and it ends at 1093 millivolts, which for some reason doesn't show here. For the 780 Ti, I was able to go from 950 to 1250. That's a much, much bigger voltage range. So the... Um, so these 1070 and 2080 Ti basically start here, in the middle between these two measurements, and they end just before this line. So the 2080 Ti and the 1070 are less than half as wide of a uh, voltage window as the 780 Ti has, and that's sadly just because voltage control on newer cards on NVIDIA is just really, really hard to get. Basically, the only way to get a range like the 780 Ti has is to just hard mod the card and like disconnect the um, any or any of Nvidia's voltage changing capabilities, um, which uh, well I might do on the 1070 one day. I'm sure as hell I'm not gonna do it on my daily card because 2080 Ti's are still very expensive, and by that I mean expensive enough so that I can't replace it if I break it. So, yeah. Um, but let's get into the data a little bit more. So, as, as we've already discussed, 780 Ti was a pretty big difference. From 51 seconds down to 34 seconds. That's a 51% difference, just because we added more voltage. All the tests were at the same core clock. Everything was at 1005 MHz for the 780 Ti. For the 2080 Ti, I uh, selected 2010 MHz as my default core clock just because I know that 2010 runs at 975, because I actually run my 2080 Ti under voltage to 975 millivolts daily, 
Uh, and part of the reason why I wanted to test this is because I just wanted to know how much performance am I actually leaving on the table by running my card under vaulted. Answer is not that much. Um, so yeah, that's why I chose 2010, because uh, of course to do the tests you need the card to be stable at whatever voltage you have uh, the lowest, because you need to run the same core clocks across all voltage uh, settings, otherwise your results are not going to make sense. But yeah, as we can see on the 2080 Ti, there's not that big of a difference. Um, so yeah, there's like a 5.8% difference, I think between the worst result and the best result, which, yeah, like, it is a difference. Like, it is it is measurable. It's not a difference that I really care about, though. Um, because, like, 5%, you can uh, change your performance by a lot more than 5% by, say, getting a good RAM overclock, or like installing more RGB software, or um, yeah, just like certain specific graphic settings in games. Like 5% is a measurable difference, and you can, like you can just about see how the graph goes down as the voltage gets higher, like it varies slightly. Um, but it's nowhere near as strong as the 780 Ti. Like the 780 Ti is a massive difference. Like yeah, like quite literally 10 times more because it's 51% here, it's 5% here. So the 780 Ti has a 10 times bigger difference from just changing the voltage as the 2080 Ti. And it looks very similar on the 1070, which I was testing at 1999 MHz core. Um, like very similar to the 2080 Ti, basically as close as I could get. Um, the 1070 actually gave me some weird results. So you can see, as I increased the voltage for the first three levels, the time actually went up. It got slower with more voltage. It only got faster when I put the voltage to max. Now what this tells me is that first I was right not to choose the 1070 for my demonstration video because it was also giving me contradictory information like that when I was originally doing it with Firestrike, um, where my performance either didn't change or got worse with higher voltage. So there might be something funky going on with this 1070 or just the 10 series GPU boost algorithm in general. But basically what you can take away from this is that at the least for this 1070 or probably for 10 series at large means that this is all margin of error. Like, I think this is all within margin of error. Maybe there's a very, very slight difference um, from putting more voltage into it. But um, first it went up and then it went down once. So you, you can see the graph is essentially flat for the 1070. A very slight performance increase on the 2080 Ti, 1070, basically within margin of error, just flat. So it's kind of the thing I wanted to say because the video demonstration might might have um yeah might have made it look like running your card under vaulted leaves 50 percent performance on the table which is true for the 780 ti and a very good example for showing what clock stretching does it doesn't mean that if you run like a 10 20 or 30 series sadly i don't have a 30 series to test but i expect very similar results to the 2080 ti and the 1070 here um it doesn't mean that if you run one of these cards under vaulted that you lose like 50% performance. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you would have noticed by now if you did. Because, um, yeah, like I've, I've talked about this before. Like I run my 2080 Ti under vaulted because I can save... Uh, so my average power consumption when it's running under vaulted at 975 is around 210 watts in most games. Um... If I run the card stock, it's around 280 watts. And if I run it overclocked, it's around 340 watts. With the current prices for power in Europe and specifically Germany, and also the not that big performance difference that you get from overclocking the card, um, I've chosen to run my card under vaulted just because it consumes less, like a lot less power. Like it literally saves me money because power is very expensive in Europe and Germany right now. Um, you're doing something good for the planet, obviously. 
Um, and also the card will live longer because it runs colder and there's less current going into the card, which puts less strain on the VRM, like, just generally. Like, I don't see a reason to have my card overclocked right now because I'm still getting the same core clocks as stock, like 2010 is the stock core speed on my card. And from this clock stretch testing, I can see that at worst over stock, I'm losing like 2.5% performance because I haven't included it in here, but I also tested the just fully stock configuration of the card and it was something like, it was, I think, pretty much exactly 4.5 seconds. So basically like right in the middle between 1000 and 1050. Um, so it was like, so 975 is like 2.5% slower than stock and this is like 2.5% faster than stock. So 70 watts for 2.5% performance difference is not worth it to me. Um, and when I like balls through walls, overclock the card, like full mem, like my card does a pretty good memory offset. Actually, I run my memory offset for the undervolt. I didn't for this testing, but I run my memory offset for my daily undervolt. Uh, yeah, it, the card's fast enough. Like I can still overclock the card when it in like a couple years when it starts to get a bit outdated. But for now. Uh, I don't see a reason to not run it undervolted because it saves so much power, the card runs colder and it's gonna live longer and just generally you're, you're not really losing anything. I think this is even more important on 30 series, specifically anything that uses the GA102 die, so 3080, 3080 Ti, 3090, 3090 Ti, all of these, honestly, you should just run undervolted. Because those things, like I've said it repeatedly, I don't know if I said it on video, but I sure as hell did it say did say it off video. The GA102 is an abomination of a GPU. I absolutely hate it. It is it should not exist. Uh, it consumes way too much power, way too expensive, not enough performance difference to previous gen, if you ask me, for all the downsides it has. Um if you have a card like that, please just run it undervolted because it, like the 2080 Ti already is a very big GPU that already saves on a lot of power from running it undervolted. GA102 is that but multiplied by like 2. And the 4090 is also gonna multiply that by 2 again if the leaks are true. So um, yeah, like please, please undervolt your cards. Like at that point your card is actually not just costing you a lot of money in your power bill, I think your card will actively contribute to climate change at that point. So please do yourself and the card of it. Like 3090s blow up all the time. Bulls just got a second one in that's also dead. Um, like, yeah, like you will probably like very significantly expand the lifespan of your card by running it under vaulted as well. Um, but anyway, um, that, that's been quite a lot long side tangent for just showing uh, three graphs. But basically, yeah, what I wanted to say is that clock stretching does exist. Like, at least on the 2080 Ti, that is clock stretching. It's just a very inconsequential amount of clock stretching. On the 1070, there's probably also clock stretching, but it's so minimal that basically it's within margin of error. Um, yeah, and there's, like, two reasons why I think it might be like that. Either... The cards just don't scale with voltage as much as the older cards like 780 Ti does. Or because of GPU boost, you actually end up getting more voltage than you might think. Um, because GPU boost, like, what you see in the measurements of like MS Afterburn and GPU-Z is one thing. What you actually get physically on the card is a different thing. Um, which is kind of what clock stretching is all about, actually. But, like, because GPU boost exists... Um, it might actually like boost your voltage in little bursts, which counteracts the performance loss from um, from clock stretching. If if I decide to like mod the 1070 or like get any other um, modern Nvidia card, like speaking 10 to 30 series card that I can just mod without many uh, much risk. Um, I'm gonna try the same thing again across a much, much wider voltage spectrum and see what, what it does. Uh, and also trying to disconnect NVIDIA's um, power like management stuff, just completely get rid of it. Um, 
I'm gonna try that. Maybe we're gonna see some difference then. Maybe we're gonna see scaling like the 780 Ti. Um, we'll see. But basically, if you run a 10 to 30 series card, clock stretching does exist, but it doesn't really do much, not without you modifying the card at least. So if if you run, yeah, like that, that that's why I say like, if you have a high-end NVIDIA card from that generation, you can run it under voltage just fine. You don't lose much performance. Um, and it's probably going to live longer if it's a 3090. <laughs> anyway, um, video's been way too long for already. So thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something. Um, and I hope my graphs were interesting enough to look at. And goodbye.